I think for a lot of teams, they're starting to look at what problems they're starting to have and how they can fix them. Because Justin Fields showed enough to keep his job. <laughs> <laughs> you throw, big dog. <laughs> 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 no, it's time to move on from Justin Fields. As we head into the final quarter of the regular season, let us analyze every NFL team's biggest cause for concern right now. Arizona Cardinals, the Kyler Murray decision. Murray has looked like his Pro Bowl self since returning to the Cardinals, leaving the team with a potential franchise-changing decision. Do they keep Murray and continue to build around him, or do they rebuild from scratch entirely knowing that this roster is extremely flawed and requires plenty of reinforcements? Atlanta Falcons, the quarterback room. The Falcons are the front runners to win the NFC South, even though they've had blackluster QB play all season long. The question is, can Desmond Ritter and or Taylor Heineke do just enough to help Atlanta win the division and potentially win a playoff game? Baltimore Ravens, health on offense. When Lamar Jackson is healthy, the Ravens are a bona fide championship contender. But having missed 11 total games over the last two years, you can't help but naturally remain worried about his well-being. Buffalo Bills, coaching. As evidenced by Ball of Buffalo's gut-wrenching one-score losses, head coach Sean McDermott is losing his grip on in-game management and late-game decision-making. He already made a mid-season change at OC, but maybe McDermott is actually the real problem here? Carolina Panthers? The entire offense. It doesn't reflect well on Carolina when their only productive offensive players are 33-year-old wide receiver Adam Thielen and number 2 RB Chubba Hubbard. Bryce Young is playing so bad that David Tepper fired Frank Reich before he even even made it to a full year. The O-line is in shambles, and Young is completely devoid of weapons to help him grow at the NFL level. Chicago Bears, to keep or not to keep Justin Fields. Like Arizona, the Bears have a pretty tough decision to make with their young starting QB. Do they build around third-year signal caller Justin Fields, who has shown tremendous improvement this year, or do they take Caleb Williams or Drake May? Cincinnati Bengals, what's wrong with the defense? The Bengals can clearly compete having Jake Browning, who guided his team to a stunning upset win in Jacksonville in Week 13. But Joe Burrow's absence is not the main concern at this stage. It's actually Lou Anarumo's defense. Through Week 13, since he was 22nd in scoring D and ranked dead last in yards allowed per game, how can the Bengals possibly squeak into the playoffs if Lou Anarumo's D is going to continuously underperform this year? Cleveland Browns, QB conundrum. Losing to Sean Watson for the year suddenly has the Browns' playoff hopes on life support. PJ Walker wasn't it. Dorian Thompson Robinson is a rookie fifth round pick, and Joe Flacco just landed his new gig in late November for a reason. Cleveland has a top 10 defense and enough offensive weapons to get by, but can they get by with this current QB room? Dallas Cowboys, the 49ers roadblock. Steve Young's 49ers needed three cracks at the Cowboys in the NFC Championship game in the 90s to finally break through. This time, Dak Prescott is playing the role of Young. His last two playoff losses have come at the hands of the 49ers. If the Cowboys meet San Fran in the postseason, will three times prove to be the charm for Dak and company? Denver Broncos, the defense. The Denver offense has improved drastically under Sean Payton and has thus given Denver life in the postseason race. That said, they won't complete the miraculous in-season turnaround unless the D gets some Kleenexes and stops some nosebleeds for once. Detroit Lions, lack of big game experience. Detroit lost to three other playoff contenders in Seattle, Baltimore, and Green Bay. Their lone win against a top-tier team came against the Travis Kelsey-less and Chris Jones-less Chiefs in Week 1. Are the sloppy and mistake-prone Lions capable of beating a more battle-tested team like the 49ers or Eagles come January? That is going to be the number one issue facing Dan Campbell's group right now. Green Bay Packers, the run defense. The Jordan Love-led Packer offense has slowly but surely figured things out, and the Cheeseheads suddenly control their own destiny for a postseason berth. That said, a talented Green Bay D that's allowing up more than 130 rushing yards per contest is certainly cause for tremendous concern. Houston Texans, the secondary. If there's one thing that might hold this team back from January football, it's the passing defense. The Texans are a borderline bottom five team against the pass, even struggling against mediocre QBs like Gardner Minshew and Baker Mayfield. Indianapolis Colts must stop the 
run. Indy's high-powered offense has this team in contention for a wildcard spot, but the Colts' main Achilles heel is a really scary bad one. That run D has been a mess all season long, allowing over 130 yards on the ground per game. Jacksonville Jaguars banged up offense. Trevor Lawrence suffered an ankle sprain in week 13 against the Bengals, and top wideout Christian Kirk will miss time with a core muscle injury. When healthy, the Jaguars are a clear-cut Super Bowl contender in the loaded AFC. But without a healthy T-Law and without Kirk, Jaguars might not even make the postseason. Kansas City Chiefs, the receiver group. After the ageless Travis Kelsey and rookie sensation Rashi Rice, well, <sighs> Patrick Mahomes just has nobody to throw to. I'll do it myself. Kadarius Tony, Marquez Valdez, Scantling, Sky Moore. Yeah, none of these guys can get open or seem to always just drop the most routine passes from number 15. Las Vegas Raiders, offensive power outage. How can an offense be this bad with superstars Josh Jacobs and Devontae Adams, Jacoby Myers, Michael Mayer, and Hunter Renfro? The Raiders offense has underachieved mightily this year, and a scorched earth overhaul has to be considered for this unit if they don't show any improvement in these final weeks. Los Angeles Chargers, coaching. What more is there to really say? We remain stunned that Brandon Staley is still here, despite wasting Justin Herbert's early prime years and a loaded roster that would be a true title contender with the right coach. Los Angeles Rams, can the offense stay healthy? With Matthew Stafford, Cooper Cup, and Kyron Williams returning to health, the Rams have re-emerged as a playoff contender in the not-so-loaded NFC. When the Rams' core players on offense are healthy, they are a playoff team. The key words, however, are when healthy. Miami Dolphins, elite opponents. Miami was overmatched and utterly dominated by their three toughest opponents in the Buffalo Bills, Philadelphia Eagles, and Kansas City Chiefs. Clearly, the two attack of Iowa Tyree kill led offense can absolutely crush weaker teams. But the postseason doesn't consist of garbage opponents. Minnesota Vikings, quarterback. After winning his first two games with many, Josh Dobbs came back down to earth and lost his next two games at Denver and at home against Chicago. The Vikings boast a top 10 D under Brian Flores and plenty of offensive firepower in Justin Jefferson, Jordan Addison, and TJ Hawkinson. The only thing that could hold many back from a playoff appearance is the QB play. New England Patriots, the end of Bill Belichick? Look, maybe the game has passed Belichick by, or heck, maybe he just needs a fresh start somewhere else. But keeping Belichick could further set the Patriots back by many years. But also, firing Belichick and watching him succeed elsewhere is also a pretty dangerous game to play. Hey, uh, good luck making this decision that'll make or break your franchise, Mr. Kraft. New Orleans Saints, Derek Carr. The Saints have a borderline top 10 defense, and Chris Olave, Alvin Kamara, and Taysom Hill headlining a deep set of offensive playmakers. Yet, uh, well, they're unlikely to win the hapless NFC South, even with an awfully weak schedule up to this point. Derek Carr's terrible play, sudden injury concerns, and outbursts at teammates have led to a forgettable first year in the Big Easy. New York Giants, the O-Line. The playoff dream was dead for the G-Men a while ago, and the main objective the rest of the way is to figure out the pass protection group. 2022 first round pick Evan Neal looks like a bust. Rookie center John Michael Schmitz Jr. looks no better. And 2022 breakout star Andrew Thomas has regressed considerably this year. Regardless of who actually starts for the Giants behind center next year, they gotta figure out what they have in this O-Line. New York Jets, the entire offense minus Garrett Wilson and Brees Hall. No offensive line, atrocious quarterback play all season long, and no secondary playmakers to compliment Garrett Wilson and Brees Hall. Yeah, this Jets offense is a big apple-sized disaster. Philadelphia Eagles, the secondary. Philly's pass defense was a strength a year ago, but it's been the club's only major weakness this year. They sorely miss CJ Gardner Johnson, and I've seen their star CB duo of James Bradbury and Darius Slay significantly regress. Pittsburgh Steelers, the passing game. Pittsburgh has an elite defense and a top tier RB duo in Najee Harris and Jalen Warren, but the passing game has been an issue all year long, and now Kenny Pickett is set to miss time due to injury. Pittsburgh looks like a playoff team, but they'll be one and done if this sluggish passing game doesn't pick it up. San Francisco 49ers, safety first. The 49ers lost all-pro safety Talanoa Hufunga for the year with a torn ACL, leaving them with 33-year-old Tashawn Gibson Sr. and rookie Jair Brown as their safeties. The 49ers have a rock-solid D, but that safety unit is a concern against top-flight offenses. Seattle Seahawks, the defense. 
The offense has been more than fine with DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, Jackson Smith and Jigba, Kenneth Walker, and Zach Charbonnet producing a plenty. Unfortunately, the Seahawks may miss the playoffs because their D can't stop Jack. Tampa Bay Buccaneers, the rushing offense. The Bucks have been held back by a non-existent ground game that is in danger of finishing dead last and rushing for the second straight year. If Rashad White and company don't get it going soon, the Bucks will be watching the playoffs from home. Pure and simple. Tennessee Titans, the passing game. This was always a rebuilding year for the Titans, but if Will Levis doesn't show improvement in the final weeks, then what? Do the Titans look for a new QB in the 2024 draft? Everything's on the table here. Washington Commanders, the defense. New defensive play caller, same result. Ron Rivera's D has been just as bad since the firing of Jack Del Rio. It is incomprehensible, given that the unit was a top 10 group a year ago. Rivera is sure to lose his job by the end of the year. But what do you think is your favorite NFL team's biggest cause for concern? Let us know in the comment section below. If you liked this video and learned a thing or two, clicking the like button helps out a ton. And hey, we appreciate it. If this is your first time coming around to TPS though, subscribing is a great idea because we put out videos like this every single day. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.